That's live, baby. That's what I'm talking about, baby. It's live stuff here. Talking about crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Good morning, weirdos. <clears throat> Yeah, let's talk about growth, you know, growth and change, you know, and totally, totally being somebody else, you know. Wow. Hey, it's 5 a.m. It is April 10th, 10 days away from 420. Uh, yeah. I got hot coffee. And I got radio shows. What do you want to do first? Coffee or radio? Oh, I vote coffee. Oh, yeah, baby. Mm. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I look horrible, don't I? My eyes are all poofy. Big giant bags under my eyes. I'm going to move this over here so you can hear it clang. Mm, mm, mm. Arr. So let's see. What did I do yesterday? Yesterday I re-edited that Alice video, that White Rabbit video, and uploaded it per YouTube's request. Uh, screwed the pooch on that one, huh? Uh, good morning. Is that you, Joel? How's Yosemite? Oh, uh, yeah. Good morning, sir. So it must be the East Coast thing that's got you waking up this early, huh? You're just you're just used to being awake at this time, huh? Arr. Your message was redacted. Did you say good morning and then? Yeah, it was nice. You uh, are you not there anymore? Where are you now? Are you in San Francisco? Mm. Oh, yeah. Fremont, right on. That's cool, man. Fremont. Uh, I think the last time I was through there was to see the Grateful Dead in 1995, uh, a few months before Jerry died. Cool. Yeah, we went to the uh, Shoreline Amphitheater. Uh, and we came over through Yosemite over the mountain from the 395. Uh, I can't remember what that pass is called, but it's up over the 395 uh, from the 395 uh, in, I want to say, Lee Vining. It's where just north of June Lake in California. And you take a little mountain road that goes up and over and down. And it's really neat because when you're coming from that side, you can really, I mean, you look down on Yosemite from uh, a, a, like a northeastern position, and it's just a great view. Uh, and the mountain road, uh, it had just opened up from the snow when we were going through, and it was just snow on on every side. And and Yosemite was just white. It was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. Of course, as soon as we got down the mountain and down into the valley, uh, my friend's station wagon. Uh, took a dump i can't remember. i think it was the starter i think the starter went on all i remember is that i was tapped to be the mechanic and i was underneath that thing uh working on that that damn station wagon oh boy yeah i got a story for everything the uh, presidio 
if you've never been to San Francisco, the Presidio is a neat place to go to. It's on the north side of the Golden Gate Bridge. And just as you get to the north side, there's this little off ramp that you take and it goes around to the east and then back under and through a tunnel and then pops out on the west on the coast at an old military base. And uh, I believe you can get in and go and visit um, because there's a hostel there where you can stay if you're like on a bike uh, and you can stay at a hostel. And we stayed there on motorcycles. Uh, the Presidio, man, it's a really cool looking place. It's just fucking awesome. And if you if you watch movies like Bullet uh, with Steve McQueen and you see shots of San Francisco back in the 70s, right around the Golden Gate Bridge, the north side of the Golden Gate Bridge, and then that highway that goes up from there, uh, it's like nothing. There's nothing there back in the 70s. And now it's just, it was crazy when I was there in the 80s. Uh, but I never got to make it to the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, I don't think so. We took another bridge over to uh, San Francisco and uh, went to that park right right up the street from Haight-Ashbury, uh, right up from 710, uh, was it 710 Haight, where the, uh, where the Grateful Dead lived. We went by that house, hung out on the doorstep, you know, like every freaking hippie does. Uh so you going to San Francisco? Are you going to keep going north? Are you going to go up and see the, uh, oh, what are those called? The Redwood Forest? Uh, those big giant redwoods with the uh, that you can drive through. Ah, oh, that was a fun trip. I remember that. Uh, going to those big trees, you know. And you couldn't, I couldn't pull my van through one of those big trees, but it was neat on motorcycle because you could just, whee, really cool. So, yeah, so let's see. This is, uh, it's Wednesday, of course, so it's Old Time Radio Wednesday. Um, you know what? Yesterday, I was going to go over to one of our customers' Airbnbs where we, where, where I store a lot of my stuff, uh, paint stuff and my records and speakers and that kind of thing. Um Oh, south along the coast. Okay, if you're going south along the coast, uh, Hearst Castle, all right, is down there. Uh, there's some great lighthouses along the one, uh, along the coast there, Highway 1. Um, if you get a chance to go to Lime Kiln Beach, Lime Kiln, it's those big giant things that they cook rocks and turn them into lime, right? Lime Kiln. It's Lime Kiln Beach, and they call it that because they actually you go down in there, and it's it's this giant bridge that goes over this this like this uh, valley where this this creek this river runs down into the uh, Pacific Ocean, right? And it comes straight out of the the mountain. So there's there's like a forest, and then there's this creek that runs down out of the forest. If you hike up far enough in this creek, you find this pool. Uh, way back there, uh, halfway to this pool, there's these old giant lime kilns, just giant, uh, like a, like a pottery kiln, right? Big giant barrel looking things. Uh, but it's it's a really neat place to go hang out. It's like it's like forest right down through a creek onto the beach, and it's just a really bitchin uh visual you know um you stand up on the bridge and look out in either direction up into the into the mountains or down onto the ocean you can hike out onto these big giant rocks that look down onto the beach it's a fantastic place to go hang out um so if you're going south uh yeah that's about half a that's about half a day's drive i think from san francisco <laughs> At least I, I remember it being about a half a day's drive to San Francisco from when we stayed at Lime Kiln. Uh, but yeah, it's a really, really cool place. The, the, the Southern California, any any coast along California, pardon me, above Los Angeles all the way up to San Francisco is just crazy looking. It's crazy looking. There's just so much coast and so much. Uh, well, it used to be pretty barren. I mean, it used to be just coastline. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of development. Um, there just wasn't. 
And now it's, I mean, it's going to be crazy now. I don't even know, man. You got to let me know what it looks like. It's just like overly developed as you're driving south. Because it was like nothing. It was like there were little little tiny communities along the coast. Because you, the, the, the one would kind of weave and then kind of weave out to the coast and then back up into the hills. And then weave out to the coast and back up into the hills. Yeah, totally. So let's see. Um, I'm killing time because I want to stretch the the uh, playing of the radio, old time radio shows uh, out a little bit so that uh, come eight o'clock, uh, we still got some radio on so I can make a phone call around eight. Yeah, I got to call and order some weed. I'm getting a mite low. Hmm. So the house where all of my stuff is, I went over there yesterday to pick up my paint stuff so I could start painting, doing the prep work. And I need to figure out what I got. Do I got enough rollers? Do I got enough brushes, buckets, screens, that kind of shit? So uh, I drove over to the house and I, I walk in to this vacation rental and there's stuff there there's somebody staying there right it's like well, hello hello anybody here hello so i stop in my tracks and i back out and i lock the door and uh i drive down the road call my what the hell i thought this place was supposed to be empty she says well i got nothing on my calendar of course the lady who does the booking can't get her head out of her ass um to save her fucking own life she's just Duh. Uh, of course, she's very, very demanding of everyone else. But when it comes to be, being demanding of herself, she's like, oh, well, it's just stupid me. <laughs> Everybody's just supposed to go along with it, right? Twit. Yeah. There we go. Hi. Good morning. Uh, so, yeah, I was kind of bummed out because I was going to go pick up all of my paint stuff, going through it as I was loading it. And then add to my list and go to Home Depot and get all of my stuff, right? And now I'm I'm boned. I'm totally boned. Um, not only <clears throat> pardon me. Not only oh, did I not get my stuff yesterday? But I didn't get to go to the store either. So I'm I'm double boned. So I can't really do anything about working on the house because I don't have any of my prepping tools and prepping materials. Uh, I can't go shop at Home Depot because I don't know what to buy other than the paint. Uh, and I need to know rollers, brushes, tape, plastic paper, all that crap. And I know I've got some. So I'm just kind of in limbo until I get over there to get my shit. That's a bummer, man. Eh. Like I was really in a hurry to go out and work. But I got to get it done before the weather gets shitty. And the plus is that it's been really windy lately. So it's not like I can do much painting anyway. You can't spray in the fucking wind and it doesn't reach the building. You know, you got to be too close to it. And then the wind stops and then you're, you puddle. Ma'am. Mm -mm -mm. Uh. Uh. so yeah i uploaded that uh white rabbit video i was quite proud of it the first edit but i used i did use way too much alice i just assumed that because they let it pass that the copyright on alice in wonderland from 1933 had run out right um, I used a lot of Alice during the, the music portion of the video, but it's like, I keep 
putting it all over the screen and, and moving it around and the sound is not there. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's hard for the computer algorithm to find it. Right. And I thought, well, why don't I do that with the beginning and I can leave Alice and I can just kind of, I was like, ah, fuck it. You know, I'll just, uh, have two versions, you know, the version that I've, that I watch and then the version that's on YouTube, which is, you know, a minute, minute and a half shorter. Uh, it's cool. I can dig it. Uh, I like the fact that the music is there and uh, the video gets the point across. And uh, I just really want to share the Tommy Tom show. If you haven't seen any of the Tommy Tom show, uh, check out my videos and especially go to Instagram and check out the Tommy Tom show T O M I T O M S H O Tommy Tom show the Tommy Tom show I I someday I want to see them on you know um the tonight show or one of those late night talk shows um or open for one of my favorite groups because they deserve it they really put in the hours they put in the work and you can tell in their playing I mean, for crime any sake, during the White Rabbit song, she had the hiccups, all right? And you didn't know that she had the hiccups until the very end of the song, and you could just hear her hiccup just a little bit, you know? And her fingers are, she's got fabulous fingers. Of course, they weren't at the open mic again in Landers, mainly because it was cold and windy. And um, that's a far ride for them. That's like an hour, hour and a half from Hemet out to Pioneer Town or Hemet out to Joshua Tree, Hemet out to Landers. That's like, that's like almost two hours out to Landers. Crazy. W would you do that to go get on stage for 10 minutes? That's it. They get, they get up there for 10 minutes. I mean, last time... There were so few people there, they probably could have done a double set, right? Uh, but I was glad I went. I mean, to see Chrissy belt out uh, Patsy Cline and Loretta Lynn, whew, along with her original stuff. Oh, my goodness. Uh, check out check out that little piece of live stuff that I recorded. I was out of, I was out of memory on my phone, so I had to go live on YouTube to capture it. Um, uh, and I was, I was hoping that I had a strong enough signal. The last time I did live from right here in town just sucked. It was just awful. It was totally awful. Falafel. It was an awful falafel. Yeah. Arg. Am I, am I, am I being picked up okay? Uh, I, I need to change the batteries in my microphone and mixer so I don't always know if I'm being heard correctly uh, until I get on my phone and, and listen to myself. So if you're there, Joel, I, I, do I sound okay? Because I'm going to go to uh, a radio show here soon and I don't want to I don't want to waste anybody's time. Oh, great. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I am going to get ready to put on... Here, we'll do this. I'm going to put on one of my old-time radio shows. I'm just going to play it directly from my playlist here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to YouTube on this computer and make these videos public. So then I can just play them right out of my phone, right? And then at any time during the day or night, y'all can play these here bidjas, them there bidjas. I haven't heard much of what we're going to listen to. I've heard all of the X minus ones. Any X minus one that we've listened to? or that we're going to listen to, I've heard a million times. I have the whole collection on tape, CD, 
uh, on computer. And uh, yeah, I listened to the hell of some X minus one. And okay, we're going to go public on this one. Publish. Public on this one. And the public on this one. My name. Jose Imane. Now I'd like to be an astronaut. I would like to be an astronaut. But because I like it to go into space. All right. That's that. Now let's go here. Boogity boogity. All right, we're just rocking here. Rocking, rocking other videos. What are they, those videos, homes? What are they, 27 seconds ago, homes? Okay, let's see. Let's start off with <laughs> the shadow nose. All right. Let's see, we're turned up there. We're, um, let me go ahead and do a little preview sound. All right. Can you hear that? <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> A shadow knows. Blue Cole presents The Shadow. A man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Shoot me a message if it goes wonky. All signs point to a severe winter. Be prepared. If you want to be sure of even, dependable, helpful heat in any kind of weather, insist on Blue Cold. America's finest anthracite mined from the fields of northern Pennsylvania. The coal that has colored a harmless blue at the mines for your protection. You can't tell me because I can't. You can't do it. We have to look at time. We must beg for no. I told Albert to serve our coffee here in the library. I should rather go on the terrace. Bertie. Then let me see you smile. Crown is most unbecoming. Lamont, give it up. Give what up, my dear? Drinking coffee? Serious, Lamont Cranston. But I foolishly let you know that... Do you remember what you said? It will be exactly five years next week. But there's still so much to do, Margot. Do it. Realize that you can't keep on like this forever. One to identify you, and when that one does, someone else is certain to kill you. Perhaps, but until they do. Oh, darling. Good morning. I don't mean necessarily to give up your work, Lamont, but this other shadow just disappear and openly. You and the organized forces of law and police. Won't you realize, Margot, that my entire usefulness to the organized forces of law and police lies in my remaining outside those forces, in remaining always the shadow. Would they approve my message? Would they believe in my science? You could make them believe. You could make them approve. And in doing so, reveal my secrets, my knowledge. Reveal them and eventually let them fall into the hands of organized crime. No, Margot. No one must ever know. No one but you. Why do you think I've devoted countless hours to investigating electrical and chemical phenomena? Why do you think I went to India, to, to Egypt, to China? What do you think I studied in London, Paris, and Vienna? Except to learn the old mysteries that modern science has not yet rediscovered. 
the natural magic modern psychology is beginning to understand, and, well, magic that wouldn't seem so natural. I studied and learned for a purpose, my dear. All right, Lamont, I, I realize all that. But now, now the entire underworld has but one objective, to erase the shadow. That Until they know what the shadow is and who he is, what can they do? Don't you think how many criminals are either dead or prison because of our activities? Why, even now, the night, as we sit quietly here, somewhere, an innocent human being may be in desperate trouble. Somewhere, perhaps, there is a problem that can never be solved, except by the shadow. What did the doctor say, Grace? It was good news and, and bad, too, I'm afraid, dear. Well, whatever it was, dear, tell me. Well, he said the baby could be perfectly well again within a year. Oh, thank God for that. Jim, he's had a tough time. Well, what else? This part isn't so good, Paul. You'll need treatment during all that time. Paul, treatments cost money. I know. Well, we'll have to manage somehow. You didn't do a very good job marrying me, dear. Darling, you can only get a job. I've got my health and I've got brains. No one seems to want them. Oh, you will, dear. They, they dropped you. You're right about that. It's just about down to rock bottom. I raise every cent I can on a house and car. There isn't anything left. You and I are still left, Paul. And we've got to take care of Sally. She's our daughter, Paul. And she's to have her son. And she's going to have it. Somehow. Tomorrow I'll start out and take anything I can get. Darling, perhaps tomorrow things will break for us. Yes. If only they don't break the wrong way. But are you the boss here? That's right. I'm looking for a job. Soon, buddy. If you do anything, wait on table, wash dishes, anything at all. Help? Well, how about delivering things? I've got a car. Yeah. I don't deliver nothing, Miss. I don't need you. See. All right. Thanks. Hey. Hey, you. What? You calling to me? Yeah, sit down. Have a beer. No, thanks. I I don't drink it. Hey, I'll sit down. Meet a friend of mine named Lefty. My name's Red. <laughs> Look at my hair and you'll know why. Well, I'm glad to meet you both. Gordon's my name. Paul Gordon. Well, did... Do you want to talk to me about something? We might. Might be able to help you out. Sounds like you're looking for a job. You bet I am. I need one. You know anybody that could use me? Maybe. We don't know you yet. As so far as that goes, I don't know you either. So you read the guy smart. Uh, maybe too smart. Now look here, Mr. Gordon. We need a car, and we need somebody to drive it for us. You understand? Well, we're going to head to the car, and I can drive. Is it a good car? Has it got speed? I guarantee you up to 80. It's not bad. It's not bad. Now, listen, kid. How about meeting us tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? All right. Where? Well, let's see. Uh, we're going to... Um... I got it. Right in front of the Uptown Bank. We got to go there first to cash a check. Well, how about $5 a day? That's over. But you'll remember, be there at 9 o'clock or you don't get no job. Now, don't worry. I'll be there. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Buddy, you can't keep this car in front of the bank all day. Did you see that sign, no parking? I'm not parking, officer. I'm waiting for a couple of men. I'm working for them. Um, hey, what's that? Don't oh, I shot in the bank. Hurry up. You're have it, right? I'll hold him. There's never a shot that cop. Can't you get no more speed out of this car, fella? She's doing all she can. Due to that tire, Red. Uh, mister. Go ahead, a windshield. Say, send me out of this. Take the car. I think I'm in with you. That's just what we're figuring on. Now, here comes the curve. After you make that stop. Get ready, Red. I'm ready. 
I'm just leaving the evidence. Son of a big push. Right. Okay, goodbye, Gordon. Thanks for the race. You guys, be like this. They'll think I did it. Could you? I haven't got a gun. I wasn't in it. They made me drive the car. Keep your hands up just the same. I thought a car, Charlie. All concerned. Well, fella, you might as well come clean on this. I haven't done anything. I tell you, I'm innocent. Where your seat cushion? A bag full of bills and a gun. That's the gun that bumped off my buddy Louis. And you say you're innocent. I am. Well, it'll take more than saying so to keep you out of the electric chair. Jury have found you guilty of robbery under arms and of statutory murder. You have been shown to have had both motive and opportunity. The consciousness pile of a mass of interest. I myself have no doubt of your guilt. Therefore, in accordance with the law, I direct that you be taken from here to the place from whence you came, and that there you be put to the a manner stated by the law. And they want to judge this that he has no doubt on he's your a fucking dope. Why, I don't know where he is, Your Honor. The last came from over there. In that corner. Yes. Your Honor, but there's no one in that corner. Only... A shadow. <laughs> Mother will be right here in the next room. Oh, God. Help me. Me. I know what to do. Yes? Who is it? My name is Margot Lane. I have a message for you, Mrs. Gordon. You're not a reporter, are you? No, I'm a friend. I've come to help. Oh, then please come in. What is it you want, Miss Lane? Mrs. Gordon, your husband has a friend who's going to help him. Here's a thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> That's for you and Sally. Thousand. He has a sentence to me. For that, I can't tell you. But the message with it is not to lose hope. But there is hope for Paul, then. The man who sent this to you never fails. Who is he? For that I can't tell you. But Miss Lane, you know him. Sometimes I wonder whether I do. I love him. But I wonder whether I know him. What do you mean? It's hard to tell whether I really know the man or only his shadow. Well, Lefty, tonight the poor guy goes to the chair. That's what he gets for being a sucker. Yeah, there's not a clue that even points our way. Not even a print. We had gloves on all the time. You had yours up for a minute when you were sitting next to him. Yeah, but uh, I didn't touch the wheel. Then we ain't left a clue. You think so? Who said that? You, Lefty? No, I, I thought it was you. It was I. You cannot see me. Who are you? And where are you? I am here in the room. In the shadow. You have assumed your crime, an innocent man. You shall not suffer. You will. I don't know who you are, where you are, but you're bluffing anyway. We got no evidence. We didn't leave a clue. We did leave a clue. Clue that will send you to the chair. Where was it? Where was it? You're lying. Wouldn't you like to believe that? Keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. That you forgot. Oh, we can still save it. Stand by. For orders. 
In a few moments, we will return to the shadow. But before we do, let me stress this one fact. For home heating, anthracite is best. And America's finest anthracite is blue coal. Anthracite is a helpful fuel. It gives steady, uniform heat that helps prevent colds and cuts down doctor's bills. For with anthracite, there is no quick chilling of the house, such as you get with fuels of the on and off type, or with quick turning fuels that flare up and burn out. Bear in mind that heating plants in this part of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So before that cold snap catches you unaware, call your local blue coal dealer. You can find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified directory under the words Blue Coal. Call him tomorrow and order a supply of America's finest anthracite. I wonder how many people got cancer from that blue coal shit, dude. Fuck. Have you got any words for the governor? I'm sorry, Gordon. The governor refuses to take any action. Thanks. I'd like to go. Night. At 11 o'clock. What, what time is it now? Almost 10. Is there anything I can do for you? No. Thank you, boy. Very well. These guards will move you to another cell. I'll be back in a little while. Ready, Gordon? Yes, Scott. We're just going to move you to another cell. What does it matter? The one you're going to is near a... Near to the chair, is that it? Oh. All right. Let's go. All right, Gordon. Walk to the left. You'll be right here behind you. I'll lock the door into the preparation chamber, Pete. Okay. Just a second. All right. Go on through, Gordon. Watch him, Pete. I'll shut the door. What? Do you use all this trouble? What chance have I got now? I'm afraid you haven't got much, brother. Uh, I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? Wait, Smokes. Quick behind you. Where? There. Too bad. I hated to do that, but there wasn't any other way, and you'll only be out for a while. Now, Gordon, listen to me. Hey. Where are you? Can't see you anymore. Where have you gone? I don't know. Now, Gordon, there's much time. Listen to me. No sign is perfect. There's always somewhere a loose end. The only reason all signs aren't solved is because there's some one fact that someone knows and doesn't tell. And sometimes they don't tell because they don't know. They know. I told everything I know in thought. They wouldn't believe me then because you couldn't prove what you said. We are going after the proof now. You are talking. Oh. I'm going to think. Your mind. I don't know what you mean. Don't try to understand. Do as I tell you. I want you to concentrate, Gordon. Your mind on everything that happened that day. Make mental pictures. I'll see what you do. Bye, now. No. No, Gordon. Stop thinking about your wife and baby. How did you know I was thinking about that? I saw it in your mind. I see in my mind. Pictures you create in yours. Oh. Like television? Like mental telepathy or mind reading. Hypnotism. Whatever you do. I don't want to Don't talk to Think. I will. Thank you, John. It's uh, getting clearer. That's better. Go on. Yes, Ben? Huh? Gordon? Thinking about the electric chair. The picture. The fire. The fire.
Oh. Quando tudo bem? Yeah. Thank you. Lisa. Loud. Yeah. Wait a minute. Small man with red hair. He was the one you called red. Yeah. Yeah. Spicy. Look at nose. Short. Glasses. I know that man. He's Red Sloan. Huh? Hard to see. I know. Think for your life. Why hard? Yes. You started the town. The other lefty was in front of you. Lefty. Lefty. See him for me, Gordon. Star oh, on his left cheek. Why didn't you mention that in court? Stop. Never mind. Concentrate. Yeah. Yeah. That speech wouldn't keep you covered with a gun and back at the same time. What we do? You reached up and pushed it the rear view mirror. Now we've got it. That new end. That's where his imprint will be. Gordon, now I can save you. You stole the truth. You didn't know you knew. You're a fool for coming in here again. The place we picked up that kid that's burning tonight. What do you want to come in here for? This is as good a place as any, ain't it? Bones <laughs> here? Maybe you never heard of it, but it's a great invention. But nobody knows I'm here. Well, somebody knows because they're waiting on the floor. It's... Okay, don't be too long. Let... Oh. Hello? Say, what are you laughing at? Who is this? Say, what is this? Well, bad about young Gordon. <laughs> what do you know about that? Who are you? What do you want? But you ain't got no evidence. Yeah. No, we had gloves on. There couldn't be no fingerprints. If you have, Mr. Sure, I did. Your Rick Sandler. Mm, fair friend. You were sitting in the front seat of Gordon's car. Your gun was in your left hand. Remember? Say, you ain't nobody, I. It's just. Say, how do you know? What did you do with your right hand? My right hand? Took off your right glove, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. No. Gosh, I'm so nuts. I can you because no, I didn't. I didn't take it off. Are you sure you didn't reach up with your right hand and grip your mirror? Are you sure, Lefty? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I did that. Please. He hung up. No. No. I won't marry. I read. Fresh. I have to say, who is the guy on my net? Where's that car of Gordon's now? In his garage. I guess I heard his wife. Tra what? I got a hunch. There's some fingerprints of mine in that car. Red, we got to wipe him off of there, or maybe we'll burn in that chair, too. Come on, let's go. But, Commissioner... I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but I don't see what we can do. Since the men committed the crime of free. Where did you get this information? Oh, that I can't tell you. Hey, Miss Lane, Paul Gordon was convicted of murder by due processes of law. Tonight he pays for his crime in the electric chair. 
If the police listened to every crank who came in here claiming new evidence... But an innocent man to the chair, they can't... No, but they can send a guilty man. And according to the evidence, Paul Gordon is guilty. You know, suppose that afterwards, when it's too late, they discover that Paul Gordon wasn't guilty after all. And suppose I testify that the police refused to listen. Well, what do you want me to do? If it's within reason, I'll do it. What? Send the men to that garage. I want you to catch the guilty men and see that justice is done. I'm frightened. Brace up, Gordon. It won't be long. Get your chin up, buddy. My turn next. So long, fella. Good luck. Bye, kid. Where is he? He must have seen me. Who, son? Well, no. There's a voice. What's the voice? He... He had it stand by. Now, oh, steady, old man. Don't lose your nerve, Gordon. Open it up, man. What's in there? You do it? Didn't I tell you? Please, Gordon, wait. Give me a few minutes more. Just a few minutes. Don't take me in there yet. Please, please. He said, please wait. Easy, Gordon. I'm sorry. Go on that door. I'm gone. It'll be too late then. Take him in, men. Men, listen. Gordon, wait. The doctor's on the phone. He says stop. Stop everything. The governor's saying. He wants to talk to you on the phone, Warden. He says don't electrocute this man. They've got the other two guys in Gordon's garage trying to rub out some fingerprints. One of them was shot and died. But before he died, he spilled it all. Didn't do it. It was a prime. Oh, thank God he got me in time. Gordon. Gordon. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yes, I'm heard it. That boy said he would. I'm free. You're not going to electrocute me, Gordon. You know? No. No, Gordon. The governor saved you. Governor? No. It wasn't the governor. It was somebody else. It was something else. What do you mean, Gordon? Who saved you? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. I never really saw him. He was only... Shadow. Before another adventure with the Shadow draws to a close... John Barclay, Blue Cold's heating expert, would like to say a few words. Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. If you're interested in having a more comfortable home this winter, be sure to call your local Blue Cold dealer. For he's more than a fuel dealer. He's an authority on modern home heating. You see, for more than six years, I've trained servicemen for these Blue Cold dealers. These men, known as John Barclay servicemen, have added thousands of... Families like yours to enjoy a greater degree of comfort and to save heating dollars, too. I'm going to read part of a letter typical of many received from satisfied customers using Blue Coal and John Barclay service. I quote in part, The service rendered by your John Barclay service men has been invaluable to me. We were burning a ton of coal a week, having great difficulty in keeping our fire going throughout the night. Your service man made me many helpful suggestions regarding the proper way to regulate the furnace, and recommended the use of blue coal. We not only reduced the amount of fuel consumed to one half, but actually got more heat. Think of that, friend. In this case, a family cut their fuel bill in half simply by following the advice of a John Barclay serviceman, whose services were given without charge. Now, you don't have to buy blue coal to benefit from John Barclay service. No matter what kind of fuel you're using or from whom you've been buying, if you have any heating problems, consult the blue coal dealer. You'll be very glad to place his John Barclay service man at your disposal to solve your problem. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. Real names are never used in these shadow stories. <laughs>
And there you have it. That's pretty cool stuff right there. So that's the actual, the first, the first episode of The Shadow. Uh, it's not the origin episode, which I have heard. Um, of course, if you're familiar with The Shadow, you know that that he went off to Tibet. He's a uh, he's a wealthy newspaper guy, and he went off to Tibet to learn the mysterious ways of the Tibetan monks, and uh, find out about um, mental telepathy and mind reading and mesmerism and that kind of stuff. Uh, so basically, what the shadow does is he he mesmerizes people into uh, thinking that he's not there. Basically, he becomes a shadow in their mind. He clouds their mind so they cannot see him. Uh, so that's, that's some weird shit, right? It's like, boom, you're on mushrooms. Uh, hey, bud, man. Hi, bud, man. Uh, Orson Welles, he was 22 at this time. Uh, and he stayed with this show for, I think like a season or, or about there. Uh, and then he was, um, he was at the helm of the Mercury Theater and in charge of the Mercury Theater players on the air. Agnes Moorhead was one of his famous, most famous uh, actors in the Mercury Theater. Um, she did a lot of side stuff. You know, she was in the Twilight Zone as that uh, mute lady who was attacked by the little spaceship in her cabin and she just kind of ran around trying to stab at these little little robbie robot walking around little tiny robbie robot um she also did the uh the tv or the radio version of sorry wrong number we heard that i think last season or, or sometime at the beginning of this season but most notably agnes moorhead was uh well known for uh the mother on Bewitched, the old witch lady. Uh, I can't remember her name, um, but she was uh, she was the mother on on Bewitched, uh, Esmeralda or some some weird freaking nineteen forties name. Um, but yeah, Orson Welles. This he he became the like Hollywood golden boy. Uh, soon after this, he was just into everything. He had the voice, he had the look. This is back when he was really thin, and he had he just had this look about him. Uh, and he was he was really in demand. Uh, and he spread himself pretty thin. He was doing radio, he was doing movies, um, he was directing stuff. Uh, he was a, just a phenomenal director on radio, and then he took it to the movies, and then he did most notably one of his first films was, uh, um, oh shit, Citizen Kane, right? And of course, he did a lot of weird stuff, The Third Man, and uh, and uh, oh, there was one that he he played in. He put on a big fat rubber nose and. He put on a bunch of weight, had these big jowls added. Uh, and damn, I can't remember what the name of that movie was. I'll have to look it up. But he just did some crazy shit when he was young. And then as he got older, he just became more and more eccentric, right? And he couldn't, he couldn't, he literally could not afford to take care of himself later in life. Uh, it was just, it was just amazing that, you know, he had done all of these fantastic things. He was known in Hollywood as like the guy, right? And now he's living on the couch of a young director, you know? Uh, it's just, it's crazy, you know? You know, he died a pauper, you know, doing, uh, doing wine commercials, Ernest and Julio Gallo wine commercials. We shall serve no wine before it's time. I know. Yeah, you can totally tell Hollywood just doesn't take care of their own. I mean, they they just assume blackball your ass than to worry about what's going to happen to you after they've used you up, right? You see that with a lot of kid actors. They just use them up. And then when they can't do the things, you know, that they just aged out of, it's like, you know, we don't have any use for you. 
you know, the smart ones leave it early before it's taken away from them. And the smart ones go to school, you know, um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas from uh, Home Improvement, right? He did a since early on when he did the, the voice of uh, young, the young lion and Lion King, right? And then all through his his youth, he was like a freaking superstar. He was like the rock star of teen idol kids, right? And then he just left it all behind and went off to school and spent, you know, what, four years at Harvard or something. And then kind of drifted back out and said, hey, look, I'm still here. And nobody nobody gave a shit at that point. He had, he had aged out of his... Uh, his ability to to please the uh the money grubbers in hollywood just too too free too much the end of this episode right just before he gets saved um, from the governor and he's going off to the chair and he's doing all of the i don't want to die please please don't make me die I didn't do it. I swear I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Oh, God, please don't let me die. It totally reminded me of the James Cagney movie. The first movie that we saw, the Bowery Boys, the, the Dead End Kids, the East Side Kids, right? Uh, it was called Angels with Dirty Faces. One of my most favorite movies from when I was a teenager. It's like a 1930s or 40s movie, right? I think it's 1930s late 30s it's got a young um not so known humphrey bogart in it and uh jimmy cagney and a bunch of early dead end kids hunts hall and uh leo gorsi uh, just a second <laughs> Ah, well, there's one dog out, and then one's probably going to want to come back in. But yeah, Angels with Dirty Faces is a fantastic movie. If you get a chance, um, James Cagney, Angels with Dirty Faces. It's it's uh, my friend and I, Andy, uh, Andrew now. Um, I was Mike, and he was Andy uh, back in the day. Now I'm Michael, and he's Andrew. Um, anyway, back in the day, we used to literally we i had that on on vhs and we would watch it like religiously it was one of those things we'd come home from school and the first thing we'd do is we'd put on bonanza because it'd come on like three o'clock right two or two or three o'clock come on channel five so we'd throw on bonanza and we'd have to get in there and get the tv on and be watching bonanza for the opening sequence so that when they zoomed into the map and it said Bonanza and the Bonanza went down into the map and then the map burned, right? And the map lit up. Us stoner kids, we had to be lighting up our, our doobage when that map was burning. All right, you ready? All right, hit it. <laughs> and we'd, we'd spark up the doobage, you know, when it, was, uh, when it was a map burning time. And then after that, we'd watch Bonanza and we'd, then we'd put on a movie and we'd usually put on Angels Angels with Dirty Faces or uh, Stalag 17 with William Holden, uh, directed by Otto Preminger. Uh, that's another phenomenal movie. Uh, in fact, my, my friend Andrew, uh, he spent some time as the producing artistic director at the Long Beach Playhouse. And he got to produce that uh Stalag 17 because it was a play before it became a movie and then of course they turned the movie they adapted the movie into hogan's heroes okay so uh he actually got to do a production of Stalag 17 that i did not get to go see i would have loved to have been in it even if i was just playing joey 
you know, the little guy that, that sits up there and blows on his ocarina, right? Ooh. I got to deal with dog just a second. Come on. Come sit up here. Come on. No, not on my chair. Come on. You sit up here. I'll get you a blanket. Do that. Get your blanket. There you go, Sam. There you go, buddy. There you go. Back to bed. Oh, dog. <laughs> am I? Am I still here? I think I'm still. I think I'm still here. My coffee's just about gone. Yeah, uh, my friends and I, we had a lot of, uh, we had a lot of go-to movies, right? Because we'd spent a lot of time together at night, uh, like overnight, right? From like eight or nine o'clock at night till about six or seven in the morning, we would all hang out together at my fan, friend Andrew's house while his parents were working at the casinos. So we really spent a lot of time watching HBO and hanging out, watching TV. And we would just watch movies and movies and movies. A lot of time we just kind of hang out and party, you know, make weird food in the kitchen, uh, run around the neighborhood, acting stupid. Uh, but we watched a lot of movies, man. Just a ton of movies. One of my favorite weird, weird, weird movies uh, was a Clint Howard movie. Um, and it was, uh, oh no, of course I can't remember the name of this stupid movie. Um, it was about a kid at a military academy. And he fa he finds he's just bullied, right? Everybody hates him. Everybody's picking on him. Always bucketing a little fat kid. Boy, don't, don't I know it. Um, and he finds this occult satanic ritual book, right? Somewhere in the in one of the, the, the basement library kind of thing that he's he's tasked with cleaning. And uh, he starts doing all of this satanic stuff so that he can get back at these people that are fucking with him and to gain some some power uh and uh for the life of me i just cannot remember the movie i know i've got it on on tape here somewhere uh, i'll have to dig it up while we're on the next show uh but yeah i mean when i was all through my youth and even today i mean movies are kind of where it's at for me because i can i can go into a world i can lose myself even if i've been to that world a hundred times which i i do that a lot i'll put on a movie and then i'll go about my world i'll sit here and edit video with freaking caveman and ringo star you know or or something something from my past where it kind of helps bridge you know from from now back to then it kind of pulls me in in that direction rather than than being forced forward where we're all going we all keep getting forced forward right so i like to i like to kind of pull myself back uh it helps with the the uh that inevitable journey to the end right so uh let's see i'm gonna get us ready here ah boy that is good get us ready here for another show uh i'm gonna do that do that there and see what pops up on the old configurator here and uh hopefully it's the right one Ah, uh, for the love of Pete, uh, what do you do? What do you hear what do you say there, bud? Okay, so we are going to do, uh, let's do yours truly, Johnny Dollar. All right. Ah, uh, uh, for the love of 
beat the... Uh, all right, let's let that load up. And then, um, let's see. Uh, oh, so so the shadow, right? That was that was brought to us by the um, mutual broadcasting network MBN, right? They were around from like the 1930s into the late 1990s, 99. I think they finally faded away, and they were just a radio broadcast channel uh, station, and they syndicated a lot of stuff on the radio. Uh, but unlike, you know, NBC, ABC, CBS, they never went to television. Uh, and if they did, they never lasted because I don't ever remember seeing anything. I'm sure they did some, uh, you know, everybody, a lot of the radio people did a lot of film um, because sound was in, was really important in the film. So let me see. I'll load this here. And make sure this doesn't get all wonky on me. Okay. And let's upscale that to full screen. And see if we can't get around that. All right. Close enough. That's good enough there, bud. And we're going to go here. We're going to go yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Hollywood, it's time now for <coughs> Johnny Dollar. Joe McNabb, Northeast Indemnity, Johnny. Oh, hi, Joe. What's up? At the moment, my blood pressure. Too much work? No. Prospect of having to pay off on a $100,000 life insurance policy. Uh-oh. Fella, I think you know, Johnny. Art Wesley. Oh, sure. Been a pal of mine for years. Reporter. Yeah. Apparently, he's working on a story right now that somebody doesn't want him to report. What do you mean? Night before last, he got beat up in an alley. Yesterday, a car made a pass at him at high speed. What about today? It's early yet, Johnny. Oh, yeah, sure. But let's hope it's not too late. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Northeast Indemnity Affiliates, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the big scoop matter. Expense account item one, $18.40. Transportation and incidentals to New York City. I called Art Wesley's paper. He wasn't in and nobody seemed to know where he was. Then I remembered a small bar called Tony's over on 3rd Avenue. I took a cab, that's item two, a dollar and a quarter, and found him in a corner booth. Sorry, Johnny, no bodyguards. The informants I'm working with will take off fast if they spotted one. No informants, no story. That insurance policy your paper took out on you. Who's the beneficiary? A dear departed wife, Joan. Departed? I thought... We split up a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Art. We were living in two different worlds. I wanted a home and family. She wanted a trip to the moon every night. Where is she now? Who knows? On her way to the moon, I guess. Hey, look. This story you're working on, Art, it's hot, Johnny. And big, real big. A national gambling syndicate. And run by a guy right here in New York. Who? I'm getting close, but I'm not sure yet. When I am, then out come my articles. What's this guy going to do when you push him into a corner? Look, I'm worried about you. Look, Johnny, I'm not as foolish as you think. I've got his name written down and put in a safe deposit box with what evidence I got. That's my real insurance. All right, look, we've been friends a long time. I'm not going to let you do this alone. Sorry, Johnny. i got to go it alone. Since I'd gotten nowhere with Art, I decided to try his wife, Joan, even though they were separate. I found her in an apartment on East 68th, but she was hardly what you'd call cooperative. Look, Mr. Dollar, so you're a friend of Art's. At the moment, I'm not. Mrs. Wesley, your marriage with Art is none of my business. But that insurance policy his paper took out on him is. And incidentally, you're still a beneficiary. So? So he could be in danger, those articles he's writing. Why doesn't he drop it? Oh, look, you know Art better than that. Then what am I supposed to do about it? That story is his business. How I feel about things is my business. 
And come to think of it, I can't see that either of those things is your business. Yeah. Item three, a dollar eighty cab fare to police headquarters in the office of my old friend, Detective Lieutenant Rastelli. Sure, sure, I know about those attempts on Art's life. So I talked to him and got nowhere. He told me the stories about a national gambling syndicate. It's more than he told me. Supposedly the big boss is here in New York. Now what are you going to do about it? Look, the minute Art quits thinking he's got to hit the jackpot all by himself and lets us in on it, we'll give him all the protection he... <laughs> Lieutenant Rustelli. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. It's for you, Johnny. No, oh, thanks. Hello? Art Wesley, Johnny. You told me at your hotel where to reach you. Anything new, Art? I'm leaving town for a few hours. This could be it, Johnny. Tonight could be the jackpot. Well, listen, let me go with you. Sorry, I gotta go alone. It's part of the deal. Art, it could be a trap. I can take care of myself. Call you when I get back. Wish me luck. Well, look, wait. Art! Art! <laughs> Item four, a dollar eighty cab to Art's apartment, where I persuaded the manager to let me in. I was looking for anything that would give me a lead. Then, near the phone on a scratch pad, I found where he'd written the word Watika several times. Sure, Lake Watika, upstate. Art had a lodge there. Item five, twenty-five dollars even for a rented car. It was a three-hour drive to Lake Watika, which was bad enough. But to top it off, it started to rain, and rain hard. When I finally got to the highway turnoff, the side road to the lake was a mass of mud. Then I got two quick breaks. It stopped raining, and I squatted the six-mile road into Art's place. Half an hour further on, I saw a light. Art's car was parked at one side, and the front door of the lodge was wide open. When I got to it, I saw why. Art was lying in the doorway. Yeah. He was the one who wanted to hit the jackpot. But you can't hit the jackpot with a slug, particularly when that slug is right between your eyes. <laughs> I drove to the sheriff's office and reported. Sheriff Tompkins and his boys took over. But in the darkness and the mud, they could only make a routine check. He asked me to meet him at the lodge the next morning, so I did. Uh, uh, Buddy was right here in the doorway, huh, son? Yeah, Sheriff, I didn't move it. And uh, Wesley probably got shot when he answered the door by somebody standing out there on the ground. Because of that bullet hole in the roof? Yeah, right over that shelf that's stocked with canned goods, sugar, salt, and the like. Apparently, he used this place regularly. Yeah, he used to do some of his writing here. Were you able to determine time of death? Coroner says between 10.30 and 11 last night. Uh, what time did you arrive? About half an hour after the rain stopped. I'd say quarter to 12. Means it was uh, still raining a good half hour after the killing. Eh, no wonder we found no tracks. Hey, look, Sheriff. Art was working on a hot story about a national gambling syndicate. Could be that he found out who the boss was last night, the hard way. Mm -hmm. but then uh, you think the killer was from out of town. Maybe New York. Yeah. Yeah, now where would he stay? Is there a hotel around here? Lake Watika Inn, just outside the village, about six miles from here. Sheriff, I'll check it out. The guests here at the inn, Mr. Dollar, well, we have only two who checked in yesterday. It's the off-season, of course. Yeah, Clark, who are they? Well, uh, Mr. Cooper yesterday afternoon and uh, Mr. Buckley around dark. Uh-huh, are they still here? Mr. Cooper is sitting right out there on the terrace, but... Uh, Mr. Buckley paid in advance and left quite early this morning. I see. Did Buckley give any reason for stopping here? He said he was a traveling man and didn't like to drive in the rain. Okay, okay. I'd like you to write down a description of him. I'll pick it up on the way out. Oh, I'll be glad to, sir. Hi. Oh, good morning. Enjoying the scenery? Yes, immensely. Oh, sit down, won't you? Sure, thanks. My name's Dollar. Mine's Cooper. You just check in? I'll just drop by. Uh, came yesterday. Uh huh. It's pretty up here this time of year. Yes. Yes, certainly is. I, I really enjoy places like this in the off season. It's a nice change. Too bad the weather hasn't been better, huh? No? Rainstorm last night? <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that too. You were out in it? Oh, no. <laughs> no. 
No, I enjoyed it the way a storm should be enjoyed. In front of the fireplace in my cottage with a drink and a good book. No, Mr. Dollar, I stayed in last night. And that was that. I picked up the description of the other guest, Buckley, from the clerk and gave it to Sheriff Tompkins, who got out a bullet. Mm -hmm. New York City turned in my rented car and took a cab. That's item six, a dollar seventy, to Joan Wesley's apartment. Yes. They notified me this morning about Art's death. I don't know what to say. What is there to say? Good question, Mrs. Wesley. If only he hadn't been so stubborn. If only he'd given up that story about the gambling syndicate or whatever it was. Uh, you, uh, you figure somebody in the syndicate killed him? Why, of course. Mrs. Wesley, did you know Art had gone on up to the lodge at Lake Watika? No. Mr. Dollar, I'm rather tired. One more thing. Did you go out last night? No. It was raining. I stayed here in the apartment. All evening? All evening. I see. Well, thanks, Mrs. Weston. Maybe I was imagining, but it seemed to me Joan Wesley hesitated just a little before telling me she hadn't been out of her apartment last night. And if she had gone to Lake Watika, I checked the basement garage. Her car was clean. Too clean. Item seven, five dollars to the garage attendant for some very interesting information. Joan Wesley had ordered her car washed first thing this morning. Why? Because the wheels were covered with... Well, thank you for letting me know that, Joel. I think I will stop now really quick and uh, change my batteries. I should have done this this morning, but I thought I'd have enough juice. I'll uh, take these charged batteries here and put them in this audio unit so i'm going to cut off my sound real quick and uh chuck some batteries in this stuff i'll be right back Can you hear me now? I got some fully charged batteries. Does that sound better? Let me know and I'll rest I'll start the show again. Hi. My wife got me these great uh, rechargeable AA batteries so I don't have to go oh my god. Anyway. Uh, uh, so I, th I think the sound is back on, uh, let me, let me know what you think there, Joel. Hello, anybody there?
Um, hello? Let me just go to check my phone. And I'll do the usual. Usual sound check here. And I'll do the usual. Whoop. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say the sound is good. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then, let's see, let's go back and whoop. Are, are you there? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? I'm going to put the show back on, Neri. Neri. I'm going to go back, Neri. Oh, gee, there it is. All right, here we go. Whoa. Am I gone? Am I there? Hello. Let me mute the sound. Technical difficulties, I swear. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably muted here, right? Yep. I'm a muted, mutated. All right. Well, I hope you all can hear me. The audio is still messed up, huh? Hmm. Can you talking or typing or anything? Yes. <laughs> 